We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. My dad walk on. Man, hey, man, it's going down, man. Today we got a special guest in here, and she ain't playing no games, man. Hey, I listen to her sound, man. She's dope. She is. Listen, man, I'm your Monique. It's in the building. What's going on, sweetheart? What's up? What's up? Hey, man. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Man, hey, man. Hey, um, I always like to get started by letting the miss, hey, the official Miss jo- Jamaica, she likes to go down that rabbit hole and find out who you really are. Is okay. Anya Monique your real name or your stage name? No, that's my real name. Wow, really? that's dope. Hold yeah. on. And Monique is your? My middle name. Oh, okay. wow. And but Anya is my first name. That's a pretty name. Thank you. Okay. Wow. So where are you from? So um, I moved around a lot. You know, um, born. I was where? born in Tacoma, Washington. Okay. And you know, I wasn't there very long. Only like baby, baby. Then mm-hmm. my mom, she was going to school in um, New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Um, so I lived down there. Then Katrina happened. So where was um, your dad? Was your dad there at the time? Uh, my dad. He moved a lot for his job. They were never. He was never with my mom. So my mom married my stepdad when she was in New Orleans. Okay. And, um, and then after Katrina, we went and stayed in Ohio for two years. Then we came to Texas. Wow. Oh, okay, okay. So how did you get along with your stepdad? You know how step kids and step parents be. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot. I. Um, I mean, it was okay, and you know there were times that it was just a lot going on. It was what was really the roughest rough. time that you can think um, about that you can let us know about? It was mostly, like, just the way that I felt like I was being treated, you know? Give us an example. Um, I kind of felt like I was treated a little bit lesser than, like, my siblings that my mom had with my dad. And I would get in trouble for a lot of stuff that wasn't intentionally, like, being, like, a bad kid. Like, I wouldn't say I was a bad kid. I would just say I was a kid. And, you know, sometimes he would just take stuff I would do a little bit too serious. So I ended up... um, I ended up, my mom, she actually gave over her custody to my grandma. So I ended up living with my grandma for a semester, and then I moved with my actual real dad. But that, I don't get along with my real dad mm-hmm, at all. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, okay. Oh, you don't get along with him? No, Why? Are y'all, really. like, just alike? No, we're not alike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're not alike, really. Um, we just have a lot of differences. And most of my life, he was just kind of like a... You know, I go stay with him for six weeks in the summer and holiday type dad. So, so you, was, you never felt like you wanted to always be with him then? Yeah. So I went off on my own. Uh, How old by were the you? Time. Uh, I had just turned 17. So you just couldn't couldn't wait to get out of the house? I just couldn't. <laughs> I was just trying to be myself and didn't feel like home was where I could be myself. But how old were you when you moved in with your grandma? Um, I was 15, maybe six. About to be 16. So wasn't it okay living over there? You know, grandparents are not as strict as yeah. usually mom and dad, so. Yeah, that they living over there kind of allowed me to, living over there kind of allowed me to um, be myself a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, with my dad, like, he didn't really police me. So it was like I kind of got to experience a little bit more living with my dad, but I just didn't want to just the interaction between me and my dad was never you said you got to um be yourself can you tell me what yourself is when you first discovered who you are who are you um well first i'm goofy i'm a little bit soft-spoken um i you know i'm 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 not one to be like argumentative like that like i'll get argumentative but i'm not about to yell like i'm just the type of person to just chill and um also, like, you know, I like to have fun and be adventurous. And I like, I am I would say, I'm, I guess I'm like a little weird. No. <laughs> so everybody what? says, but I just, you know, um, I like things a certain way that I like it. That's I don't, fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But when yeah. did you find your love for music? Oh, I found my love for music when I was a kid. When I Like was, how old? Mm, I've Ever since you could start talking? Yeah. You've been singing? <laughs> I've been singing, yeah. And it's so crazy because my, my parents, they didn't really let me listen to, like, music like that. Like, 
we could listen like if I was listening to music with my mom, we would listen to like old Janelle Monet. We would listen to the eighties, like Michael Jackson. There's nothing wrong with it. That's no, but, music. That is music. No, right. That that's what I was exposed to. Okay. But like all that other like the other music, like one time they took my Alicia Keys C D mm-hmm. and I was like so heartbroken. So you weren't allowed wow. to listen to Alicia wow. Keys. Yeah, like R and B, like I wasn't really too much allowed to listen to like nineties to two thousand R and B like that. So like I kind of secretly did, and that's when I realized, and I started writing my own songs when I turned like twelve. Wow! And I started just like finding, and I also played the violin, so I started making cool. music on my violin and getting into making beats in my room and stuff because you know we didn't have TVs in the room, we didn't have cable. What situation inspired you to write your first song? Um, trying to make a girl group for me and my si- my sisters. <laughs> you thought you were Beyonce. You thought you would be Beyonce and uh, uh, what's her cousin name? Michelle is the, uh, she ain't the cousin Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, you fit a rock on out. <laughs> well, these your cousins with you? No, no her sisters. My sisters. Oh, y'all fit sisters? really. Oh, can y'all fit get to mm-hmm. it. Yeah, they can. So it's in the family. The yeah, because your mom, mom, mom could auntie. sing. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's dope. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you this, um, and just to get to the music a little mm-hmm. bit, uh, artificial. Yeah. How did you process that? What was what was the whole process behind that? Um, so the producer who made the beat, he also had like an idea already for the song. And so he sent what he had to me. And then I just filled in the pieces that he didn't have that he didn't send to me. And we just kind of went from there. We just kind of collabed on it. It was just kind of like a spur of the moment. He was just like, here's this song. And then feeling right to it. And then we recorded it. And y'all got who shot the visuals on it? Um, Rob Rillo. Rob Rillo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that dope, man. So, are you? Um, uh, what's the what's what's the project? The the big project that you guys are working on next? Um, so I'm working on my EP. Okay. I honestly haven't picked a name. Okay. For it yet, I don't really know um, what I'm gonna name it, but I know that the direction that I want to go in is kind of talking about things that women go through with men, and not necessarily just women and men, but kind of relationship wise, you know, just trying to bring back that old school vibe of R and B. Yeah. Talking about yeah. love and relationships and stuff. I miss like it because I'm gonna be honest with you, I like to slow dance. Yeah. <laughs> Me and my wife, we want if you can make us a banger. Something we can drag too, because I like mm-hmm. to throw the old leg up. I'm from the old school. Yeah. You had to swing the leg where I come from. <laughs> right. So you didn't, you wasn't dancing. You don't know. Uh, you you had to swing the leg up. If you didn't swing the leg back and move in a certain way, at my and during my day, you wasn't dancing. Right. We slow drag. You young folks don't know nothing about that. I, mm. I, I she like we it. be jamming. I be jamming <laughs> the old school. I, like, I, I love like old school. It. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't really listen to new music like that. She really? Like she have an old soul. Got an old I'm, soul. Yeah. Like I, I'll be in. I listen to Michael Jackson a lot. So I'm you, gonna you <laughs> like Mike? I love Mike. I don't you you know you do. I bet you don't. Do you do. like him Billie more than, than um, Chris Brown? Um, I feel like that's too different. No, we got a guy that came on here saying Chris <laughs> Brown better him. than Michael Jackson. She knows Jackson. Aldi 300. You know Aldi? Three, Al, not 300. Aldi from, Al, Aldi from Houston, it's, right? Oh, no. no. Well, no, you might think he Houston. is. Uh, isn't that Aldi 300? He, do, he doesn't do screw music? No. No, you know, oh. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I know. No, Aldi this, this guy here, uh, he does, he, you have person. to, it's a different guy, but regardless of all that, <laughs> he says that Chris Brown was uh uh yeah better than Michael Jackson. Okay, I'm just gonna put it like this: you can't be better than somebody that you try. I try to tell him and, that and, to emulate. You know, mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I try to tell him that. Like but that's Brown, my guy, though. But I love to talk to him because he's gonna tell me about Chris Brown. He say he's I better. think Chris Brown is a goat. I think people sleep on Chris Brown, but I just think that he gets a lot of his style from Michael Jackson. Of so course, you, so of you course. couldn't. You, there's no. That's why I said there's not really a comparison because mm-hmm. Mike is a trend. That is a trendsetter. He's the he set the wave. Yes. To me. So let me ask wait, wait, you. Wait, wait. Um, I asked him which one was it. Was he competing with Lil Mike or Mid Mike or Big Mike? You know, it's a bunch of Mikes. You can't just. You, Chris Brown, is, is, is he's in one the dark, category. The light skin you, or the Which white? one are you competing with? The little young boy or the big nose boy or the brown skin boy or the, or the one after he could burn his hair or before he burned his hair? Which one was it? There's a lot mm-hmm. of Mikes. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a lot of Michael Jacksons to compete with. I think he's more of the the light skin Mike with the long hair. So he that's the one when he would have to go with, huh? Do you remember the time? <laughs> the 
or the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, that, that would be he uses that would a be lot a of those moves. Yeah. Oh, so that yeah, and you know after you've seen him on BET that after after he got to perform mm-hmm. again after Mike passed, he was crying and everything. Mm-hmm. It hurt him mm-hmm. because yeah. Mike Mike hurt a bunch. Usher tell you this. I don't have to tell you this. Hell, anybody tell you this. Mike was a different, different, he was a different breed. Mm-hmm. He took Paul McCartney for a ride on The Girl Is Mine. You don't know nothing about that. I, I, I was singing The Girl Is Mine the other day. You can't even tell me all <laughs> I know the all the words The Girl Is Mine. So I want to know, um, in all the time that you've been singing, have you had any celebrities come up to you and be like, Man, your voice is so dope. Do you have any stories that you can tell us about those experiences? Um, I mean, I've. Um, you want to be modest? She thinking. Huh? She's trying she to be thinking. modest. Because I was a promoter at Prime Bar. So okay. I've come in contact with so many different people. You know. And, you and they actually heard your voice, though. They, I, I don't think. I think sometimes they'll hear my voice, but a lot of times, you know, I'm just kind of chilling and yeah. I'll you show my music. Just a little bit, yeah. I have social anxiety. You can't be like that if you want to get out. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm trying to get myself out of it. I think. I think you. I think you're doing dope. I, I think. I think, and I go here with you, whether you want me to or not. I always go to here, but I think it's it's a thing where you have to keep God first and pray, mm-hmm. and make sure whatever way you're going, you got it with prayer. Right. And then, and and when you sing, you sing it for God. I don't care if it's R and B or whatever. Whatever you do, you do it unto God, and you'll put it on a whole nother level when you do it. Absolutely. And you, you feel know, me? Yeah, it's crazy because my name, my full name means gracious spokeswoman. Hey. And so, like, you know. So you have to live up to that name. I have to live up yeah, to my you gotta name. Stand, you you know? got to stand behind that or yes. stand on that, you yeah. know. And, and, and sure. that, But I think that um, I think you're on a great path, man. I mean, uh, just from the visuals that I'm looking at, um, you know, uh, my wife always And you working. Oh, yeah, you working. I'm, I'm looking at it. You got some stuff out of just a week ago. Mm-hmm. Um, when is your next project dropping? Um... Well, I'm about to drop the video for um, Lying for No Reason. Yeah, Lying for No Reason. So, I seen um, you in the studio. You had dropped a clip on that. Mm-hmm. So I don't really know when I'm going to drop my EP. I'm still trying to get myself together, you know. Um, How often do you intend to start dropping? Um, being a new, being a, a new artist and stuff. Well, it depends on how many hits I crank out to me, or how many, you know, songs I feel fit to, to put out that I feel are quality enough to put out. So Because you say how many hits, but then even like sometimes you put something out and you think it's a hit, but then it don't it's, get it's anywhere. It's not a hit. It's not a hit, but you shouldn't let that discourage you. You should keep putting it out because you don't yeah. ever know which one. Right, could be it, right? Right, so you don't yeah. ever let that discourage you. You just keep going. Yeah, so I like to take like the songs that I feel like you know, our quality for mm-hmm. me versus the songs. I feel like maybe this, I should revisit this later or change some stuff. And then I just go from there, whichever ones I can get done the fastest, you know, mm-hmm. cause right now it's really just like me and, and uh, my manager, Dre. Yeah. Dope manager. How long yeah. has he been your manager? Um, like three weeks, right? <laughs> like, wow. You. Like going three weeks. For you. Did you have a manager before that? No, I didn't have a manager. So this is your first manager. That's this dope. That's dope. Manager. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, so he's definitely taking me to, <laughs> to new heights. Okay. Oh, oh that's good. That I won't you, be shy by the end of this. I promise. Oh no, and and, and and anything that stretches you, you don't want people that you get comfortable around anyway. Right. You want things that's going to take you out of your ordinary box to take you into an extraordinary box. Absolutely. Yeah. You like that? Yeah. You know, and it's like sometimes it's a little stressful because I'm so used to having my own having my own back. And, yeah, and and, so, and being so conservative yeah. about how you do things. Yeah, but he's the type of guy, and I know he's this. Out with it. He's pulling you out of that box, and <laughs> yeah. I like that, which is good. Yeah, yeah. which is good. You're gonna but need that. I know you were telling us that because we asked you, um, how did you find him? But you said he found you. Mm-hmm. How did he find you? Um, one day I was singing. I think I was singing Michael Jackson in my bathroom on Snapchat, and he <laughs> was just like he had um, told me he was an artist manager, and. Um, so you found me on Snapchat. Yeah, he found me on Snapchat, and then he messaged me, and then was like, "Hey, we gotta meet." And then we met up. We wrote "Line for No Reason." We wrote another song, uh, "Creeping," and we wrote another song called um, "Friends with Benefits." Mm-hmm. And he was just like, "Oh yeah, 
we in this. Like he was like, That's yeah, how I did. Oh, I'm yeah. gonna blow this we up. In this. <laughs> yeah. That's what's up. That's I love good. your analogy of it, Miss yeah. Well. Yeah, and somebody who you find that have faith in you and mm-hmm. see wow. things in you that, you know, you might not see. Right, yeah, because I've come like you know, I've been singing for a minute, you know, just knowing just being on the scene and never being really just, you know, appreciated for for my talent or anything like that. Nobody's ever just tried to really just help me go further in the right, correct way or really tried to push me, just make sure that I'm getting there. And, you know, he pushes me to make sure I'm getting there. No distractions, like quality music, we're quality person and just taking me from being, you know, by myself and trying to make it to making it. Make and that's happen. good because being a female too, you have to look out for the guys and make sure that they're not trying have ulterior motives, so to mm-hmm. say. Absolutely. So that's a good thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. You, but, you go ahead. Babe. Oh. I, I really was just gonna say you you definitely uh, seem like you guys got a good chemistry. Yes. And and structure mm-hmm. is so important, and I think you did a great thing by choosing a, a manager and 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 you know just just bring the right people under the umbrella, whether it be a stylist. Make sure all of Need them, a team. Yeah, yeah, got mm-hmm. your best interest and yeah, that's what we're whatever, doing right whatever, now. whatever, the, whatever's happening. Make sure again, make sure you believe with prayer. I always say that. Mm-hmm. Don't just don't just do it, you know. But 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 think it through properly because every move that you make, every step that you take, is basically you articulating a way to your destiny. Absolutely. So just make sure you stay focused, and I know. Hey, with God, all things are possible. And don't walk in fear. Right. No fear. It's all faith. No fear. Right. Exactly. It's easier said than done, but it's possible. Let us get that song. I was just about to say, because we had the pleasure of hearing you a little bit. A little bit. We want to hear you on these mics. We want our fans to hear you. Yeah. All right. We'll go ahead. And I'll go ahead and um, I'll sing the line for no reason. Let's go. All right. Something's up with you You've been acting brand new You've been telling me lies But I see straight through you Mm -hmm. I want to know Who's been calling your phone Mm -hmm. Late night Blowing up your line, who you talking to? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've been lying for no reason. Your mouth's telling me lies, but your eyes speak the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've been lying. For no reason And I'm sick and tired Of the things that you do All right, all right, all right That's enough I right there, man I love it Hey, man You sound so amazing No, no, she mic. sound amazing yes. and, so, so, and that's your, that's your, that's your song And you oh, wrote yeah. that song Um, Yeah, well, me, me and Dre wrote it So was that inspired by something that you went through? Oh, definitely Wow Wow. <laughs> hey, that was hey, that, hey, man, hey, hey, y'all, get in them comments, man. Let us know, man, what you thought about that, man. My girl, putting it down in here. We need don't all play. The, don't don't hold back. We need all the critics to come on in because constructive criticism is Monique always going in. Um, it's always amazing, man. I don't amazing. think you're gonna hear nothing but good things about that. That hey, that was I music know. to my ears. You know what I'm saying? And I love the way you know it. It wasn't pitchy or nothing. Just great, man. Great delivery. It was a little pitchy. No, nah, it wasn't for me. <laughs> for you, it was. But for me, you, I mean, I heard the pitch when you. Yourself. Yeah, yeah. But that it, but, part. But, yeah, that, that part. One, I heard that I, one yeah, part. That, but but that don't matter. Nigga, know what it is. <laughs> you nigga know what it is. <laughs> when you, know you went high for that one part. No, one thing I can tell you about it, they know what it is. And I'm going to tell you, I enjoyed the hell out of it. We've had a lot of people come on there and sing. And you're going to watch the episode. You're going to be like, wow. You're going to go back and look. There's so many different people singing on that mic yes. and that in that seat. And and it's just a blessing. And most of the time, it's females. Yes. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, yes. man. And, and you guys are doing a great job. So I'm where a- can they find you? Um, I'm actually available on all platforms right now. Artificial and Line for No Reason are out. And then, um, what's your name that it can find you on all platforms, please? Um, so you can look up Anya Monique, um, and my Instagram name is Anya dot the dot singer. Wow. Okay. 
And so, spell, and Anya is A N Y A. A N Y A. A N Y A. Um, so, could you give me the top three artists of all time? Dead, Dead or, alive? or alive? Any genre? Oh my goodness! God. Number one. Um. Okay. So my number one has got to be Michael Jackson. I knew it. That's <laughs> my God. Come on, quit playing. You've been talking about him for. Yeah, Mike was number one. I have a whole painting of him. Wow. Um, I love him with a passion. Number two. Um. Man, number two. No, my number two favorite is Beyonce. Beyonce? Mm -hmm. Shout out to Beyonce. She's straight up from Texas. Salute. And That's what I do on here. With salute. What's Sh your What's your favorite Michael Jackson song? <sighs> well, we ain't got the third one yet. Hold on, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> oh, my favorite Michael Jackson song is his rendition of Butterflies. Hey. Um, okay. I love the way he comes on that. I just it makes me it makes me get butterflies every time. I love mm. it. Always singing, don't leave me alone. Give me you <laughs> give me butterfly. Yeah. yeah, give me number three. Um, Your number three. Give me oh, okay. Inside, mm. inside, and I and the way he rides it, he's just so. Hey. He's so cool. And who is your number three? My number three, man of all time. Oh goodness. Um. Okay. Uh, that number three be getting them, don't it? Mm -hmm. Everybody have an issue with that number three. Like, oh, who do I want to put in that last slot? Because I appreciate, I appreciate a lot of artists. Who you, who you got? Erica Badu. Well, don't give, don't I, be putting names okay, in my mouth. Hold on. I really, I really didn't get into listening to Erica Badu until I got older. Okay. Um, um, number three. My number three. I think um, Janelle Monae, she had a yes. very That's big dope. influence. That's dope. Of, I love I love Janelle. her. Yeah, and I love Janelle her. Monae, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love her, too. <laughs> I so like her voice. who would you like to work with? Uh, who would you love to work with? Um, I would like to work with her. I would like to work with Janae Aiko as okay. well. Um, I would love to work with Janelle Monae um, as well because she... I would just want her input if I could sing order too, but just her for her <laughs> teachers and stuff, you know. Um, um, Is there any rappers that you would like to do a collab with, or you think that you would, you know, compliment? Um, because your style is unique. I, I feel like I could. Rapper wise, like you know, I feel like I could be versatile enough to do a few rappers. Like, like who? You know, like I think um, I like Gunna. I like his voice. I feel like his vibe. Gunna. Gunna. Look how she yeah. <laughs> looks. Chris, you like that like. Chris Brown song with Gunna? Um, which one? Man, it, that the one. Man, it was about a year ago when it went, when that thing was really popping too. I, I can't even remember the name of the damn song right now. I just like the way he kind of gets on stuff, and sometimes you know I'll be having that that chill vibe that he mm -hmm. has as a rapper. As well, so like. So that's the person you think you would do well with. I, I feel like I, we would have a good collab. I look, if we okay. collabed, I feel okay. like we would have a pretty decent collab. Okay. <laughs> do. Well, um, do you um, you what else you got for the young lady? That's it. Oh yeah, so uh, let, um, I tell you, man, um, we want to tell you first of all, we love you. Love we love you. Too. And we want one more we, question. You got another question? I question. knew you was gonna do that. One more I question. knew you was gonna do I it. I love you too. Um, <laughs> if you could go back. To the younger you, probably say to the 15 year old you, because you're just getting out of your mom's house mm -hmm. and you had to advise her to prepare her for the journey that she's about to go on. What would you tell her to mm -hmm. even maybe get her started a little bit earlier or something? Just anything. I would have told her to stay home mm. wow. and deal with the stepdaddy. Um, no, um, us, I would have stayed at my dad's house despite okay. having, a, a, you know, despite having all the issues. I probably wouldn't have stayed with my mom. It's just too extreme. But mm. that's another story for another day. But, um, yeah, I probably would have stayed at my dad's house, continued. You know, I had a job and everything, so I probably would have continued and just, you know, because by the time I was 19, I had my own spot, and it, it just kind of made me a grown woman really fast. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. uh, okay. being on my own. So hey. I would say stay home and stack my bread up and really have gone after my you goals, my dreams then. Because mm -hmm. right, no, no, right going now, 
Okay. Now, yeah. there you go. in life, it's like I've done things and made decisions yeah, that right have mm-hmm. kind of set, they've kind of set me back just a little bit, but they haven't set me back. Like, it's just made me more aware, but I kind of, not that I don't wish I would have went through it, but I could have avoided having to go through a lot of stuff that I went through. Because you've just, learned from all of that and it made you be the person that you are today. Yeah, like I, I wish that I had the patience I have now. That when I was when I was fifteen, but most fifteen year olds don't have don't that have patience that at all. No, they don't. But definitely, I would just tell myself, "Be patient," and you know, it'll work out for sure. Okay, cool. What about um, w- w- do you? You hadn't mentioned Drake in that. Are you a Drake fan? I mean, I, I mean Drake. I like Drake. You don't yeah. really rock with Drake. I like Drake. No, I like, you don't I like, like you old know, Drake. You don't I like, like Drake. Like I like that. old Drake. So this new album, you're not into it. Have you even listened to it? I haven't listened to it. You but even I have, listen to it. I've been in I've been in my music mode. I haven't really barely been listening to music, honestly. I bet if Michael Jackson came out with a song, you yeah, 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 yeah. Let's be real for a minute. Yeah, that was that. Yeah, I knew you was gonna. I was gonna get you. I was setting you up for the kill right then. You, you didn't did. even you know. Put it. me on the spot with that one. I got, <laughs> I got hot flashes <laughs> for sure. Well, hey, man, you know one thing I can tell you is, man, we love you and and. Anytime you got something new coming out, now that you've been on Boss Talk 101, just link back up with us, man. We're going to, you know, sure. we're going to always be looking to see what, what you're doing, you know. Sure. And we just thank you for coming on our platform, man. We are, we early in the game. Yes. We're just getting started this year, man. And uh, we appreciate you, man. For sure, for sure. I thank you for coming you on here. Well. Thank you guys for man, having me. Man, hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.